everyone. Uh, this is Farid Moradi uh, from FRMC. I am co-founder of the FRMC Solutions. So FRMC is a, a company uh, established in the October 2015. And so uh, in the Canadian company, we offer, uh, we, we sell uh, the innovative solutions for condition assessment of concrete structures, uh, either pro or products and the service. So today I'm going to uh, do a presentation to how to test uh, concrete using the Impact Echo, uh, which is one of the most famous uh, non-destructive testing method for condition assessment of the concrete structures. So this is uh, the FRMC Impact Echo, which has been launched uh, in late uh, March uh, 2021. So, and we have got a lot of interest about this product uh, from the market. Uh, it's a completely wireless device and based on the iOS application. And so everything is decent. And so the application is very well, uh, very well developed. Uh, and uh, the technology is very fine for the wireless connection. Uh, to do the job uh, easy for the technician and engineer who wants to do the non-destructive testing over the concrete structure by Impact Echo. You can go to FRMC-Impact Echo, uh, the, 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 the address here, so to know more about this technology, the features the, it has, and so if, if you are interested, you can uh, request for the code, or maybe you can uh, request for one by one-to-one -one uh, demo session. My colleagues uh, will join to you for a demo session and uh, to present the device for you over the one of the uh, online platform like the Zoom, Meet, and uh, the other available platform. Today I'm going to talk a little bit about the Impact Echo test, the concept behind the Impact Echo, what is the practical consideration for the test, and eventually at the end of the presentation, I pass the tribune to you. I want to listen more from your ends, uh, your questions, uh, and I open for the discussion. Uh, so um, uh, we can we can we can talk about your question and comments at the end of the presentation. Impact Echo, or um, named IE method, is a non-destructive test method for a structural integrity testing of concrete structures, concrete structure and masonry both. Uh, they, are, they are good, and so we can use the Impact Echo for the condition assessment of that. So Impact Echo is, uh, is, uh, is developed by pioneer of the NDT uh, uh, technologies uh, like the, uh, Dr. Carino and Dr. Sansolone a long time ago. And this uh, method has been standard uh, by uh, ASTM uh, 1383. So that, that is standards uh, talk about the how to use the technology, what is the minimum specification of the technology, and how eventually to analyze the data based on the uh, your based on your requirements. I want to introduce some other documents here, which is very beneficial if you want to know more about the impact eco testing. Uh, the other document is ACI two uh, two hundred twenty eight. Uh, which is the very good uh, report on non destructive testing methods for concrete structures. So it has a very good session uh, discussion uh, and good uh, good session and discussion about the uh, how impact eco technology. And the other document is uh, I'm uh, strongly recommended to use and which is uh, open source documents. Just you need to Google it and find the document PDF version of the document in your uh, Google page is. Uh, is a document uh, developed by uh, Federal Highway Association in US uh, based on the project called the SHARP, SHRP2. So uh, in this report, uh, they, 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 it, it, they, there is a good session about the impact echo methods and, they, and briefly show you how to use the impact echo to uh, evaluate the con con condition of the concrete structures and so how to analyze the, diva, uh, the, the data when you collect the data from the job site. So this is a, the, this, this the, the, the documents is very decent and uh, it's developed by, as I mentioned, uh, by the Federal Highway Administration in US. So uh, what is the application of the uh, impact echo. The first application of the impact echo is for evaluation of structural integrity. Structural integrity, 
let's say you can find it uh, delamination, delamination because of the corrosion of uh, a steel rebar. So you can uh, use again uh, the impact echo method. Um, and so uh, the, you can you can use the impact echo for the detection of the flaws, uh, major voids, cracks like the discontinuities, like the cold joints or major cracks. And even you can use the impact echo method to measure the depth of the cracks, which is really interesting. Sometimes uh, we observe uh, in a in very important structure like the water treatment facility, in water treatment facilities like the trunk sewer, like the water tanks, and we observe a lot, there are a lot of cracks and the structural engineer asks about the, what is the condition of the cracks. Is that just the surface cracks? or cracks is uh, controlled by the uh, steel uh, re reinforcement, or the cracks is uh, running through the thickness. So impact echo again is one of the technology can be used uh, to detect the depth of the crack, and which is really important. The other application of the impact echo method is for the condition assessment. Condition assessment, I can say a good two example of that is measure the thickness of the structural member so or verify the thickness of the um, structural member over the large area so especially in the structure we don't have any documents as with document we don't have any information and so structural engineer ask about the thickness of the uh, structural members like the walls like the uh, slabs on grades like the, the other slabs or maybe the abutments so again impact echo is one of the technology uh, can be used to evaluate and measure the thickness of the uh, concrete elements. And the other, uh, I can say, beautiful application of the impact echo is to scan the tendons and dock, uh, the tendons for uh, post tension, uh, post tension in a structural member like the girders. So again, uh, we can use the impact echo to see. Uh, the, the 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 dock is properly grouted, or there is still there is a void uh, around the uh, the around, uh, on the uh, cables and tendons, uh, which is one of the main application of the impact echo test. And so, if you look over the literature review, you will find a lot of uh, research and a lot of uh, technical documents about uh, how to use the impact echo uh, in order to. Uh, evaluate the condition of the uh, 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 tandems, uh, post tensioning tandems, and cable. So, uh, what is the uh, concept behind the impact echo test? Impact echo test has three main components. So, the first one is impactor, like the steel balls, or maybe the small uh, hammers can be used uh, for the impact echo test. Uh, what is the purpose of that? Uh, so it's uh, the, the impact can generate uh, stress waves. Stress waves uh, travel through the thickness of the structural member and reflected uh, from uh, the uh, internal interfaces like the laminations, like the uh, voids or crack, or maybe the external interface like the boundary of the structural member. It, uh, the reflection come back to the original surface and the sensor, the second part of the impact echo, uh, helps you to collect the reflection from the structural members and eventually you need the units like the data logger we have for the overall uh, impact echo, uh, so for the data analysis. So this is the theory, when, when you hit uh, by, uh, by the impactor, uh, so that, as I mentioned, the impactor generate the stress waves. Uh, different type of the stress waves can be generated, like this, uh, the waves can travel uh, uh, on the surface, like the R wave or Riley wave, uh, or uh, waves can travel in the bulk of the structural member, like the P wave or compression wave and S wave or called the shear wave. This is the difference between the P wave, shear wave, and Rayleigh wave. P wave, uh, the nature of the movement of mo movement in the structural member because of the P wave is like the compression. 
you can see here how, how the wave is traveling at different stage. For the S wave uh, or shear wave, uh, the, the movement of the uh, uh, test area because of the wave is perpendicular to the direction of the propagations. And, SRS, and the other waves is the R wave or Rayleigh wave, which are remain on the surface and propagate uh, on the surface of the, the uh, test area. So eventually you got this. When you hit by hammer, and so and when you hit by hammer and you uh, generate the stress waves, you can see in this uh, diagram how it's reflected from the one of the uh, internal interfaces. And eventually you will receive a mix of uh, R wave, P wave, and shear wave. And so uh, since that reflected gram is mix of different type of the waves, uh, we need to uh, find a way uh, to to distinguish between the different uh, type of the wave and use the proper wave for the purpose of the uh, evaluation of the uh, structure member we are testing over. So, uh, as you see, uh, based on the uh, basic th physics th 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 theory of the uh, waves, uh, how the different waves can be correlated with the property of the materials, like the model of elasticity, like the um, density, like the Poisson ratio. Uh, this is the correlation between the uh, P wave velocity with the, with the properties of the concrete. This is a correlation between the she uh, shear wave velocity and properties of the concrete. And eventually you see the there is a good correlation between the uh, between the shear wave and the R wave uh, can be uh, can can be uh, correlated to others and uh, can be estimate the R wave uh, using the uh, shear wave uh, velocity. So the first step is uh, this is the hammer impact, the force function. The second step is we have the reflectogram that the reflectogram is a mix of the different type of P wave, shear wave, or R wave. And eventually we use a function, an automatic function, which is called fast transfer Fourier to switch from, uh, to convert uh, the reflectogram to the spectral analysis to the frequency domain, from the time domain to the frequency domain. And based on the frequency, we can uh, we can comment on the property of the materials. You see the formula on the top. So uh, the the major frequency, the resonance frequency. Uh, if we use that formula, we can find. Uh, and if we know the velocity of the uh, P wave in concrete, which is four thousand meter per second in most of the case in the sound concrete, so eventually we can measure the thickness or we can find uh, the location of the uh, internal defects and flaws. So, and the other parameter, which is called the beta, uh, is the geometry factors. In most of the case, in plate shape structural members, that uh, beta number is equal to 0 0.96, and so if you want to know about uh, how you can calculate that beta number based on the geometry of the structural member, there is a very decent and excellent uh, uh, papers uh, uh, by, by Marisa Salone. She is one of the pioneers of the uh, impact echo method. So she, she is presenting uh, in this paper how to calculate the geometry factors based on the uh, structural members. Let's say in the plate shape structural member, uh, I, as I mentioned, that shape factor is uh, equal to 0 0.96, or it can be changed uh, from uh, 0 0.75 to 0 0.96 uh, for different shape of structural members, like the girders, like the beams, for example, depends on the uh, depends on the dimension of the beams, and uh, or depends on the dimension of the slab you are doing to test over that. But so I strongly recommend review that papers 
that gives you a lot of information how to use uh, the impact echo method uh, for uh, for for concrete structures so i slightly show here uh, what how looks like uh, the frequency uh, in different uh, structural uh, members um, in the case we have the sound concrete without any flaws, uh, when we hit by a hammer from the top, that hammer generates a stress wave. A stress wave travels through thickness and reflective of boundary. And at the same time, we have a sensor on the surface. That sensor collects the signals. And if you use your FFT function and convert the reflective ground, uh, to the frequency domain, you will have the uh, a shape of uh, frequency change like this. As I mentioned, the frequent the, the the resonance frequency based on this formula can be used to evaluate uh, the thickness of the uh, structural member. In case we have uh, the um, minimal. Uh, uh, flaws and internal defects. So uh, we expect as uh, some some of these stress waves by impactor are reflected from this internal interface of uh, flaws, and some others can uh, travel through the thickness. In that sense, we expect to record uh, two frequency, two major frequency like this. The first one, which is uh, correlated to the uh, thickness of structural member and the second one if you use the same formula can you uh, can show you the location of the uh, flaws inside the test area and in case if we have a uh, major uh, discontinuities like this like the cold joint let's say for example uh, your your uh, the contractor is pouring a concrete slab and for whatever reason, at some location, they stop pouring the concrete and after a couple of hours, they come back and continue the pouring the concrete. That, that, that stop can cause a, a major discontinuities, it can cause a major joint in that sense. Uh, in that sense, the stress phase are generated by impactor cannot pass uh, through the, uh, this joint all of uh, the majority of them is reflected from the joints and we can we, are, we expect to observe such a thing so, uh, the the third uh, shape of the frequency the major frequency we have here uh, can be used to find the location of the discontinuities uh, the cold joint for example and the other frequency we see at the very beginning is the other mode of deformation because the formula we have here is based on the P wave, is based on the compression mode. And at the same time, since the thickness is less and we hit by hammer, the other mode of deformation, like the bending, get involved uh, and that and they show a low frequency. Those lows of frequency is, is again confirmed. Uh, there, are, there, there are some uh, discontinuities uh, in the mid, uh, mid span, for example. And if we want to find the, the exact location of the discontinuities, of course, that the, fr the frequency of the third peak uh, can be used by this formula to find about uh, the location of the discontinuity. And the last one, which happens a lot, uh, uh, is, is, is a very good, good example of the delaminations. Uh, in the case we have, for example, the, the uh, reinforcing is still corroded by the colorad ions or any other uh, aggressive agent or ions. So that that can cause the uh, the um, delamination near the surface. In that sense, since the thickness is very very low, uh, we cannot really precisely measure. Um, uh, they, 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 they measure the thickness on those area because the majority of the uh, stress waves generated by its uh, impactor is reflected off uh, from the delaminations. And 
and uh, it's it, 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 it's it's based on the the other mode of deformation because uh, because the thickness is very uh, low and it's it's the the, the distance from the delamination to the concrete surface is very small portion of the concrete and in on that sense uh, the mode of deformation is bending and since we don't have the uh, compression mode of deformation we cannot use this formula to measure the thickness of uh, the thickness of the structural member just we know there is a sign of the delaminations uh, and if anybody asks uh, what is the thickness of the delamination of course, the thickness of the delamination is equal is around the, is around to the cover thickness because this delamination is most of the cases because of the uh, corrosion of the steel uh, reinforcement in the structural member. So this slide show you. Uh, I can say in most of the case uh, we have one of this uh, uh, situation. Of course, it, the first one shows. Uh, the good quality concrete, the sound concrete. The second one shows a concrete with the minor uh, defects. Uh, the third one shows uh, the major discontinuities somewhere in the mid span, and the and the fourth one is shows a very, very a concrete in a poor condition uh, like the, uh, the laminated concrete. So the way we do the impact echo test, uh, so and it, it's very easy and a straightforward. I show you an example of the uh, concrete slab. Uh, we do the test over that slab uh, back a couple of months ago. It was back in the uh, March 2021. Uh, so we divided the test area uh, by these uh, grid lines. Uh, so from the A to J and 1 to 24, and at the cross section of the each. Um, uh, these these grid lines, uh, we did the test impact one impact echo reading. Uh, the purpose of this test was to measure the exact thickness of the uh, concrete elements uh, in, over that slab, um, and eventually we come up with this. So that is the uh, co co color contour maps uh, based on the thickness we measured for that structural members. Uh, so the 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 concrete thickness was uh, quite the same in this area, in the green area, and the thickness was uh, uh, increasing uh, toward the walls, walls on the top, and so and we could manage to uh, to to uh, eventually comment on the thickness of this structural member to to the client using the uh, impact echo test. Uh, the purpose of the project was the uh, condition assessment of the. A slab, uh, one of the slab in a park parking garage. So that is the same happens uh, within our impact echo. So you, you can see the impact echo can generate uh, for the contour maps uh, based on the readings of the impact echo test and the dot and the analysis you are doing over the data. And so another impact echo, the FRMC impact echo has. As some AI feature, that AI feature uh, helps you uh, to find the exact uh, location, the exact peak uh, representing the thickness. Then uh, we have the virtual reality feature. Uh, based on that, you can um, uh, you can put the contour map over the test area you you are doing the test on. So. Uh, this is the contour map uh, from the thickness measurement of the concrete slabs of the uh, concrete dam here in uh, Ontario in Canada. So you see uh, we, we could manage to uh, put the, thick, the contour maps uh, representing the thickness of the slab uh, over the test area with, with the feature of the augmented reality. In. So as I mentioned, the impact echo test can be used for thickness verifications, for finding the internal flows, uh, delaminations uh, for that uh, for the uh, for con for concrete slabs, for example, in parking garage. This is the one of the example we did the test, or can be used uh, to verify the thickness of the concrete walls, for example, or again to do the same investigations uh, over the concrete walls. 
or can be uh, this this is this is the image from the pre project we did here in uh, Canada in Ottawa so um, and the purpose of the test was to evaluate the thickness of the culvert uh, it was damaged during a uh, drilling uh, a pause from the top and uh, eventually contracted uh, the contractor before uh, uh, proposing any report with repair method they decided to evaluate the uh, culvert and so one of the option one of the items want to uh, accurately uh, estimate the thickness of the culvert walls and we used the, again the impact eco technology uh, to evaluate the thickness um, I, I'm sorry I couldn't uh, provide you further information about the structure because of the confidentiality agreement we have with our client but just just I wanted to slightly show you uh, for which application for example you can use your uh, the impact eco technology and the other and the one of the good application for impact eco tests is how to measure the uh, depth of the crack uh, so which is uh, which is one of the uh, interests uh, for of uh, structural members uh, structural engineers uh, for example when they, they in, the, in in the case we have the very sensitive structures like uh, the water tanks in uh, water treatment facilities or sir trunks and if you see if 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 there is a cracks uh, all the time the con uh, structural engineer ask about the uh, thickness of the cracks uh, or, uh, open, or thickness of the opening and the depth of the cracks and since uh, the coring is not really the option in those structure in order to evaluate the cracks NDT is the only solution uh, NDT can help you to uh, comment if the crack is just a surface crack or crack is uh, is uh, controlled by the uh, reinforcing still or maybe the crack is running through the thickness which you can uh, put the condition of the structure in danger so yes uh, this is this, this part I have I have talked so far about the application of uh, impact eco test. What, what is the concept behind this technology? So, as you see, uh, since we are using the impact or that impact or generate uh, different types of the uh, surface waves like the P wave, shear wave, surface surface wave, and so for that reason, uh, we need to uh, convert the uh, time domain reflectogram. To the, to the frequency domain that frequency th those frequency can you be used for commenting about the integrity of the structure condition of the structures like the thickness so now I wanted to uh, a little bit to talk about the practical consideration uh, for uh, for the impact eco test because uh, as you know uh, you can do uh, the non slightly testing at any time at any location but so and uh, if you want to have a successful test results and if you want to eventually make sure the results you have is adequate for commenting about the condition of the structures uh, you should uh, make sure uh, the way you are collecting the data from the structural member is correct and you are safe and the da and data is safe uh, for the analysis for that reason I, I wanted to talk a little bit about the practical consideration as well so, so the practical consideration is like the uh, concrete surface preparations uh, bonding material or co coupling material uh, placement of sensor uh, grid preparations and uh, impact or choice so um, never do the, the impact eco test over the loose material so at any time you want to do this impact eco test you need to remove any contaminated uh, material from the surface, debris, slurry, or uh, loose concrete, or dry the surface, and then uh, do the test. So at any time you want to uh, do the impact eco test, even if the uh, manufacturer is uh, claiming about the dry contact sensor, I strongly recommend to use uh, a, a coupling or bonding materials 
uh, you don't need really uh, invest a lot of money uh, for those materials. Uh, and uh, Vaseline can you, for babies, for example, can be found in any rock marts. Uh, is a, one of the good uh, uh, coupling and bonding materials uh, for 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 the impact eco sensor. Uh, and if you have the uh, temperature issue and you are working in a hot weather condition, uh, of course, of uh, Vaseline cannot really use in, in those conditions. Uh, you can use the plumbing, potty, or any other adhesive material just to make sure uh, the impact eco sensor is uh, connecting to the concrete surface uh, properly. And the last uh, and the other things is that uh, select the proper uh, steel impactor for the impact echo test, which is very key. And uh, we should consider at the all time which impactor is good uh, for for the for the structural member. Uh, so uh, this this table shows you the uh, the the, di the ball diameters. Uh, and the maximum frequency can be uh, can be generated with, with those uh, size and the maximum uh, depth you can uh, investigate for those size. Of course, in, if you are working with a structural member, or a thin structural member, a uh, small uh, impactor is very good. And if you are, uh, and if the thickness is increased by increasing the thickness, uh, we, you need to increase uh, the ball size because the the small size are good for generating um, high frequency stress phase, but the uh, larger diameter is good for generating the lower frequency. In the case you have, uh, for example, in this concrete wall of the around 25 inch, in the case you have such a thick uh, a structural member, so. Uh, impact, you, you need to generate a very low frequency and high amplitude stress waves. In that sense, you might need a, a transfer from the small balls to uh, something like the sledgehammer, a handheld sledgehammer. The, 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 those hammer is good for uh, large, larger thickness of over, let's say, half a meter or uh, 400 millimeter. And in case uh, you are going to do the test on a very, very uh, thin slab, uh, I strongly recommend to use the smaller ball because the larger hammer is not really good for thinner slab and the chance of the having the bending instead of the compression mode is, is higher. So for that reason, for the thin uh, slab, I strongly recommend to use the small ball. So. Uh, what is the exactly uh, the, uh, the advantage of the impact echo test? Impact echo, as uh, as it discussed, uh, can locate the defects in local area of interest. Uh, it, it has ability to penetrate uh, metal ducts and travel through uh, reinforcing acid, which is very good in case of the, uh, the uh, reinforce a structural member, you can use your impact echo test for the investigations. Uh, and data interpretation of the impact echo test is uh, relatively uh, easy. Uh, you need, in most of the technology in the market, they convert the uh, uh, reflected ground from the time domain to the frequency domain uh, automatically. You don't need to apply any mathematical function for. So everything happens uh, automatically. And since you have the frequency and the slide that I show you uh, later, uh, that I show you earlier, so uh, based on type of the frequency, you can comment about is that is the concrete is sound or maybe there is a minimal flaws or maybe there is a major discontinuities or maybe the concrete is, is delaminated. And the limitation of the technology is uh, we don't recommend to use uh, the, the impact echo test on the fresh concrete because if, because the concept of the impact echo is based on the stiffness of uh, concrete. Of course, the fresh concrete is not stiff enough to accommodate the stress phase 
for traveling through the thickness. Uh, for that reason, we don't recommend to use impact echo for the fresh concrete. If 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 any contractor call you to do the impact echo over the structural member, I strongly recommend uh, to uh, stay uh, longer to make sure the concrete has reached uh, enough uh, strength. And after that, uh, you can do the test over the structural member. So, Impact echo tests can be affected with the surrounding in environments, uh, like the geometry of the structure member. Let's say um, the, the, if, if you place the impact echo machine near the corners uh, or edge of the concrete slabs, all the time uh, there is a chance uh, the other thing and the other reflection coming from the edge uh, can affect this, if, uh, that can affect it. Uh, the test results, uh, we should consider all the time the geometry of the structure. Remember, we are doing the test over. So, and can an impact echo cannot be conducted over on open uh, texture of concrete such as gravel surface. So, if you have such a thing, you need to slightly uh, grind the concrete surface with your handheld grinder in order to make sure the concrete surface is level and the, the and it is not rough and there is no any texture on that and so based on, and then you, you would be able to do your impact echo test so this is my uh, brief uh, presentation on the how to use impact echo test uh, for uh, testing the concrete structural member so i return to you the um, main menu uh, if you have any questions, um, I open the Q and A. Uh. <clears throat> Thank you, Dr. Farid. So we now proceed with the question and answer portion. Uh, one of the first questions we have here is: How much accuracy is the impact echo test? So the accuracy of the impact echo test it depends on the different parameters. Uh, so, first of all, is the geometry of the structure member. Second is the thickness of the test area you are doing test over. And the third one uh, uh, is depend on the which impactor you are uh, doing the test. Based on my experience, if you consider all these uh, things, the geometry, the thickness, and choose the proper a hammer based on the thickness. Uh, so I had reached the accuracy of, uh, of uh, up to 95%. And in most of my ca case, I could manage to uh, evaluate the, for example, the thickness up to the accuracy of the 95%. Uh, thank you for that, Dr. Farid. Another question is, what is the maximum depth of analysis? So it it totally depends on the uh, range of frequency which is covered with the sensor, with, which is covered with the impact echo sensor. Uh, for example, in case of the uh, F-RIMC uh, impact echo, uh, we have used uh, the, te the machine successfully up to a depth of uh, around uh, 700 millimeter, which is equal to around this, I can say, uh, 26 to 27 inch around the surface. Uh, for the thickness over that uh, amount, uh, let's say if uh, thickness of near the meter, uh, we, we need the sensor which is uh, more accurate uh, at uh, lower frequency. Uh, I can say the other machine we have, the iPod, uh, we have done a successful test uh, for the, uh, for the um, structure member like the case on of the 1.5 uh, meter up to around the uh, 75 to 80 meter. Okay, uh, another question is, can we test honeycomb in the concrete structure and pile integrity using this method? Uh, the honeycombing for impact echo is a little bit tricky. It depends on uh, the, uh, the, 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 it depends on the user of experience. Uh, let me come back again here. So for impact echo, the honeycomb can be considered uh, as a minor, uh, can we, can, it's, it is considered as a, a concrete uh, defected um, um, def with the minor defects. So 
uh, it depends on the experience of the uh, user. So let's say uh, the case, the second case uh, here we have uh, is a good example of the concrete with the honeycombing. So of course we will uh, we can measure the thickness, and at the same time the other frequency can generate it. You see the difference between this case one and case two. So yeah. the other frequency can be generated. The other the frequency can correlate uh, uh, to the location of the honeycombing inside the concrete. But again, I can say in most of the case, in case of the uh, honeycombing, uh, it, it's it's very depends on the uh, the engineer or technician experience. Okay, so it's important that the person conducting the test should know the concept behind that uh, the impact echo test right yeah so more 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 familiar with the concept and how to use really the technology yeah and another question is can we use pile integrity using this method integrity uh, for by impact echo yes by impact echo well, I, I don't recommend really to do the pile integrity with the impact echo uh, because of the uh, because pile integrity for is for uh, a slender structure member and uh, for the pile integrity we need the transducer sensor which is more accurate in lower frequency uh, for impact echo we are using the, the sensor which is more accurate in the higher frequency uh, i don't recommend really to mix uh, those devices uh, i don't recommend to use the impact echo for pile integrity testing uh, the pile integrity testing should uh, be more accurate in the lower frequency because we need to we need the sensor can uh, collect the reflection uh, from very very deep to, depth of uh, let's say over 50 meter 40 meter depends on the part uh, those uh, those are reflections those uh, stress phase are really low frequency if the sensor is not uh, accurate at the lower frequency uh, we cannot really uh, properly comment about uh, the quality of the such a structure member like the case one of the 40 meter 50 meter Okay, thank you, Dr. Farid. So it's not really recommended to do pile testing on impact echo method. Another yeah, I, I don't really recommend that one. Okay, thank you. Sorry. And another question is, if we use maximum frequency, is there damage on the structure? Uh, use the damage, for example. Can, can you repeat your question? Or how much? Um, if we use the maximum frequency, uh, is there any damage on the structure? Uh, no, 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 it's not the really damage. So because uh, the the type of the impact we do for uh, part in, uh, for impact echo test, so it's a very tiny and slight, uh, a slight we slightly hammer it or impact it by the impactor, but it, it, it doesn't damage uh, anything. Whatsoever. Yeah, thank you. And at what frequency of location does it need to be carried out? What would be the best grid space to get the best results? So depends on the, uh, the depends on really the scope of the work. Also, what you want to do. So in case uh, I, I'm as I as an engineer, um, so I normally I go with the grid lines of the three feet by three feet or around meter by meter. But in case uh, if if I find a location uh, uh, that I feel uh, it needs. Uh, a further investigation, for example, I reduce the for the uh, size of the grid lines and I go with the finer grid lines. But so uh, I, I recommend uh, first of all, let's uh, let's look over the scope of the work uh, and let's see what is exactly looking for. And the first shot is go with the gross uh, uh, grid lines. Then, uh, if you feel at some specific locations, you need to. Uh, cover more and you need collect further results, uh, reduce the size of the uh, grid lines on the, at those locations. I know sometimes uh, I ha I ha I, at this time I have a client who's working in Mexico. Uh, so with Ephraim's impact, they call, uh, we, we were talking over the phone yesterday. He was telling me the, the client uh, is pushing him to do a very, very, very fine uh, grid lines. And now he, he, he needs to Collect uh, over thousand data points <laughs> for those structural members. So it totally depends on 
what you want to do but the logic is uh, start with the gross grid lines then based on the uh, data you collect from the job site you can decide at which location uh, change the size reduce the size or not okay thank you for that dr Fried. another question is what additional capability does impact echo test have over the upv test i think this is upv test yeah okay so the first is uh, uh, impact echo can be used when you have the access just to one surface of the structural memory. That's the first point. The second point is, for example, you can use the impact echo to measure the thickness. Uh, let's say uh, you have a client uh, for a tunnel lining or maybe for abutment walls, but they want to verify the thickness of the uh, lining, the thickness of the wall. So, and there is just one access from the one side. Okay, impact echo is a good test. You can go and do and measure uh, the thickness of the wall. or uh, the other application I can say for the case of the uh, scanning the tandems for uh, post-tensioning structural members, again, uh, Impactico is one of the good uh, device you can do with job with that. Uh, the other thing is, uh, uh, of course, with U UPV, you can find the flaws uh, in the test. You can say there is a flaws in the test area or not, but you cannot find the exact location of the flaws. But so... Yeah, the impact echo can help you to comment on very exactly the location of the flaws uh, inside the uh, uh, test area. Uh, these are the, the some features you can have with your impact echo when it compared with the UPV device. Okay, thank you for that. And then <clears throat> on another question is: Does the system use AI to interpret the fast Fourier transform results? Uh, so, uh, could you repeat your question? Um, does the system use AI to interpret the FFT results? Yeah, so you, for the FFT results, uh, uh, not really, it's not really difficult. And uh, uh, at the, at, at, in most of the case, your, 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 your device, for example, the FRMC device we have, it handles everything automatically. But so it shows you the FFT results easily. And so we have the AI feature. That AI feature can help you to choose uh, which peak is uh, reflecting, for example, the thickness of the structure member. Okay. And then another question is, what kind of sensor do you use? Uh, what is the highest frequency we can record uh, for shallow delamination? So the, the for, for our uh, impact echo machine, I can say we are good to... Uh, measure the, the the shallow thickness of the around uh, 50 millimeter or 70 meter, millimeter up to 700 millimeter. That is the range we are covering. So for that, uh, the, we, we, are, we, we need to rely on the frequency over uh, 20, kilo, 20 uh, kilohertz or 25 kilohertz. Thank you. And then how does frost affect results? uh flaws for example how they affect the results no oh, yeah the frost, uh, oh, frost. frost okay you are frost okay so frost uh that that's a very very good question you are asking i did a very comprehensive research uh in my phd on how the frost can affect the test results of course the frost on the surface uh you know when when the temperature goes a lot down but the the Stiffness of the concrete, concrete is uh, increase a lot, but so even even in the poor concrete, uh, because of the low temperature, uh, we expect to record. Uh, we we expect to overestimate the stiffness of concrete, even for the poor concrete, uh, because of the frost. I don't recommend to use uh, any uh, in either either uh, impact echo or any other uh, NDTs for a temperature uh, less than a. Is it, minus uh, one or two uh minus five really so make sure the structural member you are doing the test over so uh, it's not in the very 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 low uh, temperature i don't recommend to use the impact of okay thank you. otherwise otherwise if if they especially in the case your structural member is exposed to humidity uh okay that 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 can affect a lot the test results in a, in a in a in a condition you are in the 
indoor condition for example but the temperature is low and there is no any humidity moisture on the surface and no frost so again uh, you can you can use your impact eco divorce even in the cold temperature all all the things i'm as i'm pushing not to do is for the outdoor structural members in the very very cool condition yeah thank you and is it possible feasible to carry out the impact eco test on masonry structures like arches uh, masonry is a uh, uh, if 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 if, if uh, masonry means the but for example the um, brick and paste uh, I don't recommend really to do the test uh, over those structural member because uh, so they are not really homogeneous but so the the the, the test area is a combination of the different. Uh, interfaces between the paste uh, cement paste and the brick and in the case if you have the masonry but you are you know the all the structural member is a masonry but so there is no other things like a brick oh uh, yeah you can you can use your impact effects okay and then um, i'm finding another question here um how much return is there on the waves through metallic objects for example the rebar so uh, yes, that that's that's a very interesting uh, uh, question you have. Um, it depends on the uh, we are doing the test over the congested area or not, or it can say it depends on the percent of uh, reinforcement and direction of the reinforcement. So in most of the case, uh, this uh, I, I got a very good uh, literature the other day. Uh, from the uh, from the Dr. Carino, he did a very comprehensive research on the effect of steel rebars on surface waves like the P wave, and I can say in most of the structural members uh, general applications, the 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 effect of the reinforcement is less than a five percent. But in the case we have a very 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 congested uh, reinforcement let's say for example in the connection of the columns to foundation or maybe in, so in the connection of the uh, connection of the columns to uh, in the capital uh, to the uh, concrete slab where the, there is a lot of uh, steel reinforcement i don't recommend to use the uh, impact echo maybe uh, impact echo results can affect by the steel reinforcement otherwise in at the at the other location of the let's say the column or maybe at the other location of the uh, slab uh, where there is no there there, there is there, there isn't a lot there, there aren't a lot of uh, ring for there is not a lot of uh, reinforcement uh, of course you can use the uh, impact echo but i don't see based on that literature review that uh, those reinforcement can affect the test results over the five percent okay and uh, this is another interesting question dr farid Will the impact echo test work on hollow structures such as concrete pipelines? Um, what uh, and what if the structure is made of steel? Okay, in, uh, for the for the for the for the uh, steel, we don't we don't really recommend to use the impact echo because the theory is for the uh, concrete. concrete. Yeah. Yeah. So and for the pipelines, I know there are some, there are a lot of uh, concrete pipelines, or at the same time there are a lot of uh, steel pipelines. I don't recommend to use <laughs> impact echo for the steel pipelines. Okay, and then um, by your experience or research on this test, what is the minimum crack opening sensitivity that this um, test method could detect in millimeter? So yes, it's, it's, it's really uh, the crack opening less than a millimeter. They can they can uh, they can impact echo uh, measure and comment on that. As long as the interface of the crack is not interlocked, and even there is a slightly diff, uh, opening between them, even the, there is a slight the, 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 the disconnection between two interface of the cracks is a less than a millimeter. Uh, that, that impact echo can measure the depth of the crack. But in case we have uh, the cracks at some points, uh, let's say at the root of cracks, uh, they get uh, uh, the, the, the crack interface is get integrated and get interlocked. Uh, sometimes there is a chance to uh, not precisely uh, the, uh, measure the crack depth. 
Okay. Um, uh, this is another interesting question. Can we use this test to judge the acceptance or rejecting concrete supplied by the supplier? Uh, so the impact echo, yeah, but you can you, you can you uh, I never I never recommend to uh, reject any concrete, but just one one uh, one uh, non-distractive test. So the way we do uh, with the non-distractive test, uh, yes, you can use impact echo to measure. Uh, the P wave velocity. That P wave velocity, there is a scale for that. If you observe your P wave velocity is a certain amount, let's say if the P wave velocity is between 3,500 to uh, 4,500 uh, is, is a good number, and most of the and the good, in most of the case, your concrete is a sound. For any P wave velocity less than uh, 3,500, I can say the concrete is in a a questionable condition and for the stress wave less than uh, the velocity less than 3000 meter per second i say uh, the concrete is in poor condition but so yes you can use your impact echo estimate the velocity and see the qu the quality is adequate or not when it comes to rejecting uh, a concrete and says the concrete is really poor i i can say i strongly recommend to use other ndt as well at the same yeah. time at these two NDTs and just to cross correlate the data to make sure whatever you are presenting and whatever you are uh, telling to your uh, clients is uh, is accurate enough because in most of the case when you are going to reject the concrete so you are pushing the contractor in a corner with a lot of investment <laughs> but that makes the situation very very difficult for that reason i strongly you uh, have a good uh, supports of your data at least do the two ndt if you are doing the impact echo uh, complete the, those tests uh, with um, with with uh, upd as well or maybe if possible take just a few number of the cores just to make sure whatever you are uh, talking about with you based on your impact echo test and you are going to reject the concrete, uh, the, the course as well shows the same things because yeah, so. uh, that, that situation is very difficult and you need to convince a lot of people after a lot of investment, the job you are doing is a poor and very bad. <laughs> but well, then, in your hands for accepting, yes, you can use your uh, impact echo. If the results is uh, adequate and satisfying, you can say the concrete is good and you and you can tell the contractor to process it with the next guest. Yeah, and I think uh, this would be our final question for now. Um, can you estimate the concrete strength and other parameters using impact echo? Uh, for the concrete strength, uh, there is a European code. And uh, based on that European code, yes, you can use your P wave velocity plus the uh, Hammer, Schmidt Hammer results. And based on the model, which is proposed by the European codes, you can estimate the compressive strength of concrete. So uh, impact echo need to get complemented with the Schmidt Hammer. You need to both results. And then uh, go with that mathematical model. Uh, we have a very uh, decent uh, research project at this time being with the, uh, one of the, uh, with the, some of the universities in Ontario and Quebec in Canada. So we are going to uh, develop an AI enhanced uh, model, mathematical model. So based on the, your impact echo results, it, which, which shows you the velocity of stress waves and also uh, the Schmidt Hammer results, you, you will be able to up to accuracy of the 95% estimate uh, the compressive strength of concrete. Okay, um, do we still have time? Um, can, can we still answer more questions? Yes, uh, but if you have more, uh, we can go with a few more questions. Okay, another question is, can it be used to determine whether there are any internal voids for RC column or precast components? So for the precast components, yes, we can use uh, for uh, again for the reinforced concrete. Yes, we can use the impact echo to check if there are any internal voids or not. And another question is, um, do we have like certification for the operator of the impact echo test? So uh, we don't have the certification at this time being, uh, at, let's say, uh, because the in entity in concrete is not uh, well uh, well organized as the same as the NDT metals, but F prime C. If 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 anybody wants to uh, 
uh, by the FRMC Impact Echo, FRMC offer a comprehensive training. That training has different steps from how to use the device, how to successfully collect the data, and how to interpret the results. And we will stay with our end user for for a project or two to make sure the uh, the end user the user of the impact echo test he has a confident and he is a good and he has a, uh, that his level his or her level of uh, knowledge is good uh, for the interpretation of the test results from uh, the impact echo test. We are doing the same with our client at this time in Mexico. So he's he he got the job. Uh, for uh, for scanning uh, very very large concrete slabs and walls by impact echo, so we are staying with him, and so we are helping for the data interpretation. Eventually, after a project or two, I will. Uh, I'm pretty sure the guy uh, he will be good to continue and use the device uh, for uh, for for any other projects. And eventually, at the end of our training, if everything is satisfying, uh, so we will issue uh, a certificate for our end, for our and for our customer. He has already passed the uh, F prime C training for the impact. Okay, that's very good to know. Uh, another question is, how does the fiber in concrete affect the results? Uh, fiber is uh, is a little bit tricky. I don't have really experience with the uh, using the impact echo over the fiber, but I know the fiber depends on the type of the fiber you are using. Is is that the pro pro uh, po polymeric based fiber, or natural fiber, or the steel fiber? I think the results would be different. Uh, this is a, one of the good topics uh, is under progress here. The guys in in Frame C they are doing the R and D on that. Uh, maybe uh, we will, from now in a couple of months, we will have a good and decent results and we can uh, more uh, give you more information about that. And also, uh, another question is, can we use this on asphalt pavement roads? No, I don't recommend to use uh, the impact on the asphalt pavement. All the time, if you want to do the test, uh, remove all the, the topping, contaminated materials, any debris, slurry, and everything, uh, you need to place the impact echo sensor directly on the concrete surface. Uh, it is a requirement that we reach to the surface of the concrete before. Yeah, that's the one, that's a requirement for the impact echo. Okay. Uh -huh. I another question is: um, Can the test be conducted over micro concrete surface? M micro concrete surface. Yeah. Uh, I'm not really familiar with the micro concrete surface and how it looks like. Maybe, um, maybe, maybe uh, you can ask the, the guy uh, to send to FRMC, uh, to info at FRMC.com, uh, further information. Just yeah. I need to look over what is, what is the, exactly the micro surface. And so based on that, I do my best to reply his question. Okay. Uh, and I think this is the last question. How about for geopolymer concrete? So again, uh, uh, possible to use uh, the impact echo for the polymeric concretes, but based on that, you, before doing any tests, I strongly recommend to do some trial because uh, the, the P wave velocity in concrete in general practice of, uh, is a 4,000 meter per second in, in the sound concrete. But so I don't know in the, but that P wave uh, speed will change uh, based on the material because the P wave uh, is correlated with, it's, it's, a, it's a one of the parameters, it depends on the uh, property of the material. So uh, I don't know for those polymeric material, uh, how much is uh, the P wave velocity. If they want to use the impact for those materials, I strongly recommend them to, to take a course from the concrete and measure the velocity uh, with other technology like the UPV and have a benchmark. And when they have a good benchmark of the P wave velocity for those materials, they are good and uh, they can do the test uh, with the impact effort. Okay, thank you so much, Dr. Farid. So I guess uh, this is the last question. Um, so if they have any further questions or queries or clarifications, they can always send this to the link that you have just provided to us. Yeah, that one. Mm -hmm. So let's uh yeah that 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 is that is the link here uh, info at frmc.com at any time they can call or even they can call our company if they have any questions uh, we do our best to reply the question ASAP.
but uh, for our uh, impact echo uh, if 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 any attendees are really interested to know more about our impact echo uh, from impact echo is uh, this is the address you can go over that you can uh, look over the impact uh, from impact echo features or you can send your code request and also if you need to have a one to one uh, a demo uh, a demo over uh, one of the online platforms. You can send that emails uh, to our to a FRMC and requesting for the demo. Of course, my colleague uh, will contact you shortly and uh, we'll set you uh, uh, an online one -to -one demo. Yeah, exactly for a one to one demo with them. Okay, so thank you everyone. Um, if you have uh, any questions, just I'll go to these links that we have provided. And if you want to have a one on one demo regarding our F Prime CI Impact Echo device, you can always go to the link that we also have provided to you. Okay, very good. Thank you very much for your time. Uh, so, hopefully, uh, this session is, uh, would be useful for you. And so, if you have any question, ask from F Prime C. So, uh, see you in the next session for the other uh, F Prime C uh, technologies and solutions. Have a good day. Bye.